You might have noticed there's been a lot of talk about going back into space lately. And lift off. We are in a new space race. Just 100 candidates now remain in a competition for a seat on a one-way trip to the red planet. Fundamentally, the future is vastly more exciting and interesting if we're a space-faring civilization than if we're not. To travel to the moon, of course. Space Force. NASA's been taking more than just small steps to reach this goal, and last year, in one giant leap, it awarded a multi-million dollar contract to develop a 3D printing system which could build the first ever moon base. But why is NASA putting its faith in a technology that hasn't exactly lived up to expectations? And if it does work, what will it mean for construction back here on Earth? It's a lovely day for a launch here, live at Cape Canaveral. Boring! <laughs> no, not another boring space launch! In case you didn't get the memo, space is cool again. Depending on who you listen to, by commuting to the cosmos, we can do everything from mine rare minerals to safeguard the future of humankind. But NASA's keeping it old school, and its interstellar interest lies in good old-fashioned scientific research. It's building a brand new space base to make that all happen. Think the International Space Station, but on the moon. Enter Project Artemis. The point of Artemis is to allow astronauts to conduct experiments and research on the moon's surface, and to trial interplanetary living with a view to one day sending astronauts to Mars. Carrying out this cosmic construction is ICON, a Texas-based 3D printing specialist. In November 2022, it was awarded a $57 million contract to develop a 3D printed technology which could be sent to the moon to construct housing and infrastructure for Project Artemis. Sticking with the Greek theme, ICON quickly called their mission Project Olympus. Now, I know what you're thinking. For years now, we've seen all kinds of speculative CGI of what a lunar or Martian base might look like. But fear not, because this seems to be the real deal. The first astronauts are due to return to the moon in 2025, and ICON is set to demonstrate its tech there in 2026. According to ICON co-founder Jason Ballard, the final deliverable of this contract will be humanity's first construction on another world. Once the lunar loadout is ready, it'll build housing for astronauts, roads and launch pads. But hold on a second, 3D printing was that new tech that was around 10 years ago that was going to revolutionise the world and construction and make everything from housing to chocolate bars, and then it didn't. So if it never really caught on or took off on Earth, why would it get a safe landing on the moon? To make sense of all this, we need an expert. My name is Mota Zatala. I lead a research group called AMPLAB, which is the Advanced Materials and Processing Lab. My group is mainly focused on understanding the material science of advanced manufacturing, and in particular, the technology known as 3D printing. 3D printing may have dropped out of the spotlight a bit in recent years, but just because you're not walking around in custom-made trainers doesn't mean the tech hasn't been advancing. I would say the, the key developments that happened in 3D printing started from early 2000 and so on. Lasers came to the game in a much better way. We started to see also a great development in the field of robotics and the ability to move components around. At the moment where we are with things, we start to see 3D printed components going into the medical field, in particular in dentistry and in surgery. Then we started to see applications in engine applications, in space applications. As the technology has developed, the types of materials being printed have improved significantly. Where once plastics were the main material used, researchers have created machines able to print in new substances like concrete and metal. As the strength of the finished product has increased, this has led to a huge shift in how things are designed, which is of particular interest to construction, though it's not really caught on there either. But that all helps catch the eye of NASA. In the past, if an architect comes up with a very complex design, you know, Sydney Opera House, something so complicated, then as a result, the, the, the actual structural engineer had to think, how can I make this? 3D printing started to introduce a new concept, which is design for functionality. Forget about manufacturing, I can take care of that. And you think about what you want that part to do. It might be all systems go up on the moon, but back here on Earth, things aren't looking quite as bright. With the economic damage from the pandemic still sending shockwaves through the global economy, the US is currently trying to avoid a default on its national debt. Officials have warned the consequences of a default would impact all Americans, forcing higher home and auto loan rates and credit card payments. 
That would be especially devastating as one third of US households already relied on credit cards to cover living costs in December. It's hard to make any headway on saving when the typical stock bond investing strategy lost an average of 25% last year. But what experts discovered was real assets like art can appreciate more than real estate and stocks during times of high inflation. Masterworks lets you invest in high-value art from icons like Picasso and Banksy, but for a fraction of the full price. And despite record losses in global markets, they've sold 11 paintings, each of them returning a profit. There's a wait list to join Masterworks' 630,000 plus members, but you can skip it right now at that link below. Icon's actually a great example of how this technology is finally beginning to mature. Founded in 2017, it's fast become an industry leader in large-scale 3D construction. By 2018, it had built the US's first 3D printed house, and in October last year, work began on the development of 100 3D printed homes in Austin, Texas. The group first received some money from NASA to develop 3D printing concepts and soon developed Mars Dune Alpha, a prototype base used by astronauts for training on Earth. Their method was good enough to convince NASA to give them the coveted contract to build on the moon. Now, if you're still wondering why NASA is taking such a big punt on a technology which is only now beginning to prove its worth, it's worth bearing in mind the competition. Back here on boring old Earth, 3D printing has had to prove itself to a global industry with well-established construction methods, building codes and design norms. Up on the moon, however, there isn't really any other option. Any building site needs to be largely self-sufficient, as it's just not feasible to send up large volumes of equipment or building crews with specialist skills. So that settles it then. Round of applause for 3D printing. Prepare for blast off! Three, two, one... Although there is just one last thing. The Moon has about 16% of the gravity of Earth, which is still enough to allow materials to land on top of each other in the printing process, but in outer space... Printing in microgravity is a little bit different because you don't have gravity, so if you try to deposit something, basically things would fly because there's nothing to hold them down. Professor Atala's team developed a device used by the European Space Agency to custom build tools like a screwdriver from space. It used a metal wire to guide molten material into position. We just put a metal wire. And where the focal points of the three mirrors, they create together what I call a death ray that gets the molten wire to melt. You can use the wire to stick the droplets and stitch them to the surface by the surface tension of the molten material. <laughs> Well, the whole point of 3D printing on the moon is to avoid using material from Earth, so the icon system will use regolith. That's the layer of dust and broken rocks on the lunar surface. Mixed into the mortar, this is going to be layered by the printer to create structures. You also need something to get the structures or the layers to stick to one another. And one of the things that you can use is some sort of a, a resin or a chemical and that chemical can be photocured by the ultraviolet rays that are radiation in general that is available on the top of the moon. As the moon has no atmosphere, this technique is going to use ultraviolet rays to cure the resin and make any 3D printed structure harden. It's the same process used to cure dental casts at your local dentist. So far, so good. But will it actually work? The thing I like about space research is essentially you don't know what to expect at the end. There's obviously a risk in, in trying to do that. How much protection from the harmful radiation on the top of the moon can you get out of these structures? The moon also is exposed to violent temperature changes. Temperature can vary anywhere between, let's say, plus or minus 150 or 200 uh, in the same day. Whether it will provide protection, for instance, from small meteors, asteroids flying by, when you think about this idea, it's not something that is going to be deployed and you'll have astronauts living in it within 10 years. I would say if we start now, we're at least 50 years away from seeing entire moon colonies being built using this approach. Previous space missions have spawned lots of technology that we take for granted. Anyone who's ever used a computer mouse, slept on a memory foam mattress, or used a cordless power tool has space exploration to thank for it. So if Project Olympus turns out to be a success, what could we expect to learn for construction back here on Earth? Well, there may not be any huge technological advances, but it could usher in a new sustainable way of building. If you think about making something on the moon, the key point is sustainability, essentially. So 
you're trying to rely on raw materials that are available around you. And people who are in the developing world where basically it can be difficult to, you know, find tons of raw cement and sands and special material to be able to build the modern houses we all live in. Not just in the developing nations, but in the developing world where you can recycle some of the construction waste. By 1964, experts say man will have established 12 colonies on the moon, ideal for family vacations. Perhaps the biggest hurdle to 3D printing being used more widely in construction is proving its value to a well-established industry. While building in space may not have any direct impact back here on terra firma, as a display of how it can create sophisticated constructions, this is hard to beat. You can learn more about NASA 3D printing on Mars and the other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available right now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you subscribe to Tomorrow's Build.